My name is Anastasia Wairimu. Zeki Rema. Peter Chege. I'm Jane Mumbiweru. Joseph Muturi. Evans Mundi Papa. Amy Biwangare. Eva Moren Mashiri. Nancy Njoki. This area, it was the first uh, settlement. We came here early 50s. And during the, the time of uh, colonial, when we, they were fighting for freedom, uh, there are some people who, are, who fought from here. It was a, a field of, uh, of fighting. Madare. I am born in Kuru Ruben. I've been in Ruben for the whole of my life. My dad was working with former Express Kenya Limited. Ruben Slam came from Express Kenya. The owner of that company was called Ruben. After independence, Mr. Ruben suggested to close down his company. And then the workers, they were to look elsewhere where they can live. They started squatting around. You could not construct even a toilet without informing the committee of the village. Even a kiosk, you could not construct it and you had to pay. Wakati huo kulikuwa na, watu walikuwa, raia walikuwa natulumiwa sana. Kwanza mtu wana kitu, watu wa makawa ya chini walikuwa natulumiwa. Na wa landowners, private owners, wanawadhulumu, wakitaka space, wanaenda kwa dio, Muna kuja, muna bomolewa, muna hamishwa. Yani ilikuwa mnyonge hana lake. Uwezi yata pata. Ukijenga tuka structure, hawa watu anasema hii space ni yake. Anaenda kwa chief ama kwa dio, unahamishwa. So what happened around the 90s was that uh, Moi, to be able to control the, his politics, started giving land to politicians. So if you are a politician and he wanted to buy you, he would tell you, why don't you come and I'll give you some land. And they would be told to go to the land's office, so they would go, the maps would be removed, and then they would look for the empty land. They would see empty land in Mazare, Kibera, all this empty land. And then they would be given titles over that land. But when they went on the ground, they would find that the land is occupied by people. So because that time the, the government was very oppressive, they would just go get policemen. And the policemen would come and carry out evictions. Nakuta kijiji na uziwa mtu moja kwa ofisi, kwa sababu plan katika city hall, utakuta plan na wanyashana ile sehemu haina mtu. Lakini ukienda on the ground, unakuta kuna watu ambao wanaishi pale na familia zao. So wakati yule, pulikuwa mtu wakinunua ama kizana na hao officers kutoka city hall, alikuwa natumia mbinu ya kufukuza wale ambao wako kwa vijiji na kwa njia ya kuchoma njia ya kuwabomolea njia ya kuwaletea vijana wakora wakora ili wafukuze so ndipo mungano ilipoingia hiyo ndio ilikuwa ni titu ya kwanza kusimamisha they used to do evictors with fire they could start at night they take a cut they pour paraffin and then they light at the tail of the cart. Now, because now our structures were built uh, temporary, the, where the cart will just jump because of the fire now, it will go and start. After now the fire burns and we put off, we manage to put off, uh, the area chairman will come and say, this is the notice, don't rebuild. So the eviction was all over the city. They were demolishing informal areas. Uh, they were demolishing informal markets. So we had very many, very many slums where people were going for, for, for legal support. It is when we started knowing uh, each other because uh, we, 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 when we were waiting for, for lawyers' advice, we talked. Where do you come from? I come from Madare. Where do you come from? I come from Western. Where do you come from? Mukuru Industrial Area. From Remaili Saba. What's the problem? The chief has evicted us. Why? Because uh, he wants the grabbers to take the land. Then from there we started asking ourselves, what can we do? So that now we can, uh, we can uh, protect our rights of doing business and also homes in the slums. So we said we must come together. We start now with the resistance. Mm -hmm. We realize that uh, we might get in trouble with people 
fighting back, you know, fighting the police. We trained uh, communities also on active gun violence because uh, the, the resistance was becoming more violent. Nikirudi nyuma kidogo, kitambo ifikie mambo ya wanavijiji, humungano imekubali kama imeanza kusikika. Wengine kusema kweli wetu walipotesa uhai wao, wengine waliumia, e, wengine walifungwa, wengine tuditeseka. Kuteseka na maanisha, kuteseka kwa sababu sa zingine mwekutu kwa mkutano, muna pigo na tia gas, muna, muna nyeshewa, muna shikwa, wengine wamelara ndani, hapa, hata, hapa, hapa kwa tu huruma tumelara ndani. Na wengine wamekufa kama kamae kuna mama mmoja tulipoteza kwa sababu ya fugu fugu hiyo ya mungano. Alikuwa naitwa wasera. Lakini kutaka kuonyeshana moja yetu mungano wana vijiji Nairobi mzima. Tulibeba maiti ya mama wasera baka nyayo house. Ikiwa kwa sanduku ili tuawachie, tuambie sisi sasa. Tumeonekana sisi si watu ambao ni wa Kenya. Basi tufanywa vile maybe tutafanywa na ikawa serikali kaanza sasa kuona kuna watu wanazungumza pahali na ambao ni wana muungano wana vijiji. So hivyo ndivyo historia zaidi inaweza tunakumbukanga mama wa sera na wengine ambao walifungwa wetu na bado wako saa hii na hawako ndani waliwachiliwa lakini wameteseka sana. Tunaangalianga heroes ambao wamekuwa kwa hiyo eh, barabara ya muungano. I think from the very beginning we realized that going to court wasn't going to be of much help because uh, the law was against the people. We knew that even if we went to court, we wouldn't get very far with these cases. So what we realized we had to do from the beginning was to mobilize the people on the ground so that they can be able to start fighting this battle because it was, we realized it was more a political than a legal battle. And we fought until the government had our voice because we knew by then one person cannot be heard, but if we join and make noise they will, and disturb them every day, they will say, let's hear them. Uh, they started acknowledging us there is Mungano in Islam. There are people who are fighting. If it was a few people who are making noise and going to the offices to say the right come back, it could not, it could not have. But we joined us as Mungano in all the areas and we fought for. If we go to case, they come. Korogosha people come, Kibera people come and we are fighting for Kamae and we are fighting for Soweto. We joined out. And then slowly, slowly a movement began to happen. They said that they will, they will refuse to be refugees in their own country. Because if you're a squatter, you're like a refugee. Hmm? You're not allowed to stay anywhere in your own country. The Mungano actually came and said, we don't want to be refugees in our own country. We want to be citizens of this country. And they also said that they were not going to agree to give up an inch of their land. We would use uh, songs, liberation songs, that helped animate a bit of the activities, and especially in protests. We would come and before the meeting, uh, we would do a play to just remind people what happened, the eviction and the stories about the eviction. And our story had a bit of the history of Kenyan land. It was easy to connect with the people in the informal settlements because uh, landless as they were and being threatened with evictions, they had reasons to come out uh, and feel connected. When we come together with the same ideas and with the same spirit, knowing very well that what we, are, we want to achieve there is nothing we cannot, we cannot achieve. The rich would see slums as potential areas for, for, for grabbing, but now, that now when the movement became strong, they stopped focusing on that. Because of knowing my own rights, because now I'm in Soweto without being affected, without sleeping, uh, listen to a, 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 a tractor coming to demolish our village, no, no. I sleep very well, I wake up knowing nobody's coming to affect me. Those people who started Mungano, the struggle they went through, the endurance, the self-sacrifice, 
I think they should always be remembered for what they did to empower the communities and remove them from the dark ages. We were young when we were doing that kind of activism. Kenya has changed tremendously over the last 20 years. Things that this young generation are taking for granted used to be a struggle then. And we appreciate because we have been part of creating that. That was the first step to retain those lands. The second step is to develop those lands. The attitude has changed from uh, seeing slums as dirty places to accepting that we need to upgrade slums. I know the evictions were stopped, were stopped by the people who fought for, for the rights of their land. But not all the slums have acquired the, the land title. The, the, the land has not been returned to the community. We are really impressed and inspired by our peers, uh, by our elders in how they struggled. They have really shown us it was a really journey. It wasn't easy. It was really difficult. But we as youths, we need to also be like them. We should go fight for what is ours. We should fight for our rights. We should defend what is yours. There have been tremendous gains, but the challenges are still there. They have not gone away. Most of our slums still informal, still lack tenure. Most of our slums still lack services. We are not speaking only today for us. We are speaking for the generation and the generation who are supposed to come. Whatever perhaps we are saying, we are saying today, it might be written in the book of history. My grandmother struggled, my mother came and struggled, I am now struggling, then my kid struggle, then the kid of my kid no. I want to see a country where there is no anything called informal settlement. That is our biggest struggle. We start with there.